This is Dean on the scene for The Rogers Review and 96.7 FM WERA Radio Arlington. Well, we have a wonderful film because I just saw it last night. It is amazing. And I have a feeling it's going to be in my top 10 film. Yes, it will be. Trust me. Oh, it's the new movie called Wonder. It is based on the best-selling novel by R.J. Palacio. It tells the story of... 10-year-old Augie Pullman, who suffers from a cranial deformity and enters his first day of school, in a real-life school. And here with me to talk about this amazing film is the author of the film, R.J. Palacio, and an old friend of mine. We actually met because we actually talked about his book, and he directed the book, and now he directed this book, which is a movie now. The wonderful Stephen Chabalski. How are you both doing today? Very well. We're, we're good, I think. We are great, sir. Yeah. Awesome. So let me start with you, Stephen. Let's talk about working with the young man, the wonderful Jacob Tremblay. And talk about, about the process of the makeup. It is so realistic enough that it has to truly convey his performance. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, I, I, would, I would say this here. Uh, we'll Jacob Tremblay is, is I think, if, if you've ever seen the movie Room, you will never forget that, that I performance. Have seen the Oh, that, yeah, a couple years ago. Absolutely fantastic. Um, he is such a talented actor. I've worked with a lot of actors. He is he is really way up high on the top of the list. Um, uh, and, and in terms of the makeup, you know, when we did this, we needed to find a kid who would have the patience, who would have the talent to be able to convey all those emotions through the makeup. Because, you know, at the end of the day, the only thing you're feeling, it's all from the eyes, the mouth, and, and, and his movement. So you needed somebody of, of Jacob Tremblay's uh, uh, caliber to pull that off. Absolutely. So, RJ, for those who do not know, how did the story come to be? I remember reading it started with a young girl that you saw at an ice cream store. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, well, it, it, it was a very brief encounter. I never spoke with a little girl. I, I, I don't, I, you know, I can't even say that I know what her story is or anything like that. It was just basically um, my reaction to uh, her, actually my son's reaction to her face, um, just got me thinking about what it must be like to face a world every day that doesn't know how to face you back, you know. And um, so I just started writing as a sort of a point of exploration, just trying to do figure it out what it must be like to get stared at wherever you go what it must be like to have people point at you um how to uh, how, how what it must be like to face those kinds of challenges every day absolutely and here i am talking with two new york Times bestsellers which is amazing so i want to continue with you rj what is it like to hand your novel over to this gentleman over here who has written a screenplay directed the screenplay of the novel of his movie and now he's got your screenplay in your hands, I mean, in his hands, and he's directing the film. Well, it, it's tough to hand over your book to anybody, you know, and, and uh, you know, it, you have to, there's a lot of trust involved, and you have to trust that the person um, will, will do justice to your story, your characters, and your themes. Um, luckily, Stephen and I, um, we had met, we'd had dinner. Um, I, I kind of got, I, I kind of felt like he had wonders back. And that he was going to, I knew it. I just, I could tell that he, he wanted to make the kind of movie that I wanted to make. And um, I felt pretty confident. It's not to say I wasn't scared, but um, I felt pretty confident that if anybody could make it happen in a way that we could all be proud of, it would be Steven. I enjoyed how the story was presented in different perspectives. We had the perspective from Augie. We had the perspective from his friend. We had the perspective from his sister, especially his sister, and how her life really doesn't, involved around her, it revolves around Augie. I want you to talk about the different perspectives presented in this movie as well as in the novel. In the novel, you know, we hear from a couple of other characters who aren't in the um, the film, mm -hmm. but uh, the whole idea was to basically tell Augie's story from different points of view. Uh, it's all Augie's story. We're learning about Augie's journey through the fifth grade. Um, after years of being homeschooled, he starts uh, school at the same at the f for the first time in his life, and he's kind of you know figuring it out, and and we're watching him go through it. Um, but we see his story told through multiple perspectives. That's what was so wonderful about the movie that it managed to 
um, keep those perspective shifts. Yeah, to me, when I read the book, uh, it's going, I guess, two and a half years ago now, when, I, when it was sent to me right around the time that my, uh, my son was born. And I read it, and I, and I love the story of Augie. He was lovely. And, oh, I, when he gets to meet Summer and Jack and all these characters. But when I, sw- when I turned the page to the Via section, I was so, I was so surprised and delighted by that shift. And what I found and, and, what, and, and the genius of this book and why I think it'll be a class that'll be taught in schools for, for you know many decades to come is that by going inside other people's uh, experiences and, and into their mind, you, you know, she's holding RJ is holding up a mirror to all of our prejudices. You think that you know the sister. You kind of dismiss her. Oh, she's just having teen angst. And then you realize how this all affects her and you're like no oh god that poor kid she i i kind of get choked with thinking about it because everybody you think you know you don't and every story that you've just assumed that you understand you don't understand anything and it was such a great um uh brilliant literary device but told with such sensitivity and and that more than anything else um, is what made me uh, just obsessed to make the movie and to make it right. Because cutting to those point of views, doing those cards the way that she does the chapter breaks in the book was, was a really, uh, it was a really exciting thing to try to pull off. Absolutely, especially considering that both your books, it seems like when they turn into great movies and reading the books at the same time, it seems like they're both required reading for kids. And I want to know from you, Ari, since I've already asked this question from Stephen's his book years ago, how do you feel about the impact it has on kids and adults in life these days that your book have really touched people? Because when I watched the movie last night, it really touched me deep inside. It reminded me how I was a bit of an outcast growing up in school because I had a speech impairment growing up and mm-hmm. I felt Augie's pain going through that. So I want mm-hmm. you to know, I want to know from you, how does it feel to have that impact from kids who tell you, thank you for telling this story, thank you for writing this story? It's incredibly moving and incredibly humbling, and it's it's all the things that you might imagine. It's it's uh, you know, knowing that um, knowing that your words have impacted or inspired people to maybe be more empathetic or more compassionate, certainly more tolerant um, and more curious in a good way about differences. And um, I've heard you know one of the my favorite comments, one that I've heard a lot from readers. Um, from young readers is, is uh, you know, after I read your book, I, I was in, sort of more inspired to get to know, you know, that kid in class that, that no one no one knows or no one no one plays with or no one sits with at lunch or, um, so, you know, and I heard a lot about that, about kids sort of reaching across the, those sort of natural distances that do develop in classrooms and at that age and, you know, maybe going out of their comfort zone in terms of seeking out new friendships and um, so that's really inspiring, and I, I, if, if that's going to be the legacy that I leave behind, I'm, I'm good with that. It's a good one. Well, it's definitely a good legacy, especially considering, you know, today's political climate where it seems like being not nice is the norm, but you have to be nice. And I w- want to know, was this perfect timing that this film is coming out, especially given what's happening in the world right now? Yeah, you answered that because his is a shorter answer. Mine gets long. I, no, I th- I think the timing couldn't be more perfect because uh, every day that we turn on the news or every there's always it, it has been such a a very difficult year. We I think anyone can agree with that. No matter no matter your political affiliation and and there's so much division and and I'm really proud um, that to be associated with a story like this that that everyone seems to so far it's been lovely agree um uh, uh is about something that, that the world could use more of and i think that augie pullman is as a hero and all the people that love him and care about him um uh are, are good role models for us all i really do absolutely I would just say that you know children learn what they live and they model behavior that they see, um, and and so uh, you know kindness is not something that belongs to any political party. It's not a democratic thing. It's not a Republican thing. It belongs to all of us. It's a human thing, and so uh, you know when you see people in government, when you see leaders um, acting in a way that is anything but kind, 
to groups of people and singling people out for discrimination or, uh, you know, you've, you've, you hear about bands and, and walls and, and all of these things that divide us, um, usually represented in the most unkind fashion. Uh, you, you start to wonder, you know, what the heck is going on and, and what is happening to sort of the public discourse in this country where kindness seems to be, uh, where, where has the kindness gone? So, you know, if, if wonder can somehow maybe kind of be a little jolt of a, a little reminder about the essence and the, the, the importance of kindness and the power of kindness, um, then so that would be great. And, and so maybe it is a good movie for the times. Uh, let me just add one thing. One of, the great, one of the great things that art can do is if you, if, if you can make any member of an audience or a readership feel uh, that, you know, we all you see you love your mom or you love your best friend or if you start to make everyone understand on some level that everybody has that mom and everybody has those friends and everybody has a, a chance at life um it can do a lot of good in the world you know because all you have to do is slow down and realize that everyone that you met today is a hero in his or her own life and you know they and and they have every right to happiness that you have i think it can be very profound to the both of you who has been your heroes the person who stands out comes from the crowd and you never knew but this person and then all of a sudden they're like your best friend for life who has been that person for you uh well i, I bet you were going to say the same thing i'm going to say my husband he's going to say his wife um awesome. so yeah yeah I, I, uh, maybe i'm wrong no 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 absolutely i mean my wife everything good in my life now is basically as a result of meeting her and knowing her and uh She's given me a family. She's given me a purpose. And yeah, absolutely, I will say in terms of maybe more in the spirit of which you asked, which is I, for me, it will always be Stuart Stern, who wrote the movie Rebel Without a Cause and Rachel Rachel and, and Sybil and all these wonderful films. Um, he kind of, uh, he was at the school where I went to and he was my mentor since I was 19. He passed away a couple years ago. Um, and uh, he was that person for me in terms of the inspiration of, what it meant to be an artist and those kind of things. I'll always, always love and cherish uh, my memories with him. Wonderful. And mine, just to let you know, was a captain named Roy Morris, who was an ROTC instructor of mine. And when I lost my mother during my high school years, he actually became a surrogate father to me. And then when I became an actor and I was in a Star Trek fan film and oh, cool. they wanted me to name my character, it's like, I'm, I know the character's name. It's going to be my teacher's name. That's oh, that's wonderful. That. Thank I you. Love that. Yeah. Thank you. One last question. Steven, this is for you. Since you have wrote the screenplay and directed two books, is there another book in the works that you want to direct one day? Yeah, I, I finished it 13 days ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and uh, I, I can't talk about it yet. It is kind of a secret, but it's something I worked on for, you know, whenever I had a break from the movie business, I'd work on it. I've worked on it for about five years. I thought of the idea of, God, 17 years ago, I think, 15 years ago. And it was really cool to finally write my second book. I have to say that that anyone that's ever written a first book, man, that second one is is a real bear, isn't it? It's, a, it's she, luckily she's done. No, you have many of those those companion books that counts, you know. And so, yeah, absolutely. I, I nothing would make me happier. I love I love literature. I love books, and there's nothing more gratifying to me than to to take a book that I consider to be a true classic, and what, that's what Wonder is. Um, and and have anything to do with spreading the word about it because at the end of the day, um, as as a proud as I am of the movie, and I do think that the movie serves the book, I'm just so grateful. The idea of the millions and millions and millions of more readers uh, will find it because of this very lovely, elegant book commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a great commercial, and I definitely want to say go see the film. It comes out on November 17th for RJ and Steven. Steven, I have a feeling we're going to meet again. RJ, someday down the road, we'll meet again. Absolutely. Dean on the scene, listen for this review at 96.7 FM, WERA, Radio Arlington, and online at therogersreview.com. See you out there. Bye. Bye.